All right, welcome to the video. Uh, I've got my cat staring at me between my feet right now, so excuse me if I get distracted at any point. And we're taking a break from the weapon reviews and breakdowns of the new guns just for now, because instead we're doing something arguably more important and something I'm seeing asked a lot. Is this final content update good? Should I come back? What do you think? How do you rate it? And all the questions of that nature. And no one's really going over it from what I can tell as a whole and for the current state of the game, so let's Let's do that. This also gives all of you who are playing it the opportunity to share how you feel about it right now. Please do let me know in the comments what you think and actually let's rank it out of 10. And so yeah, by final update, I do mean final content update, there will of course be further things to tweak the game but this is the last set content we're getting. So listen to all the different aspects and then you can make up your own mind. So we can see that the update overall has gone quite well in terms of public reception that I can tell because well there's now a movement to try to save this game. People are signing petitions to get more BF5 content, which is a very good encouraging sign, but is also, I think, a bad idea. And I will do a separate video on why that is, because it's kind of an in-depth topic of its own, but I don't think it's a good idea at all to split their attention again. But as for my opinion of the update, overall, it's positive. If this was just a update of the game, just a random update that we got, along a continuing path, I'd give it like a 9 out of 10. There's plenty in it, most of it is well done, and it's it's been received very well, but as it's the final content update, I'll give it like a, a 7 out of 10, because they're very different things, you can't treat them equally. And so let's not get carried away with that, this is basically everything that they had at the minute, they threw it at us, so of course there's quite a lot, and the fact that some of it is good is great, but it's good stuff, it is not world shattering. So if you don't know, there are 9 new guns, 10 if you count a suppressed variant of a sidearm, a new map, a reworked map for larger modes, which is Provence, some new gadgets and grenades, some new vehicles, plus some faction reassignment for some maps and some fresh cosmetics either here now or on the way. And this does have people interested again at least for a temporary amount of time, which you would expect. And so it is quite easy to find games as of right now, at least if you're in one of the traditionally populated battlefield regions. And so of course, interest in videos is temporarily up as well. Some of the reasons for this are the weapons themselves. So we've got things like the M3 infrared, which is completely unique. Some people like it, some people don't. Most people don't even know what it's good for, but it is good to have some different things in the game. Much like with the K31 slash 43, I think it is. Don't know, doing this off the top of my head. But it's the hybrid sight bolt action rifle. I've made videos on both of those so far, which you can easily find in my recent videos if you're watching this video anytime around when I release it. But yeah, this gives us a bit more of a sandbox experience due to a wider array of possibilities. Via gadgets with unique properties and traits, via having grenades that do different things with I've seen before, like a distraction or firecracker grenade. You can shoot the new flare things at a vehicle and then drive it to drive your flare around for a while. You can jump out of planes to attach shaped charges to enemy planes and stuff like that, which yes, I have seen pulled off. It was insane. And this game was missing that sandbox feel in my and many other people's opinions. It just didn't deliver in the way that other battlefields have. It was too limiting. There wasn't enough differentiation. There wasn't enough creativity. This update finally brought some of that. You could argue this is what Battlefield 5 should have been, or at least a glimpse at it, which is sad, but at least we have got some of it now. And obviously there's lots of other guns to go and try, although weapon balancing is a little shaky, let's say, here and there, but I'm not going to get into that today. We'll focus on the positives of there are new guns to go and use, and that's a good thing. But I will mention, you know, obviously not everything is great. The K31, which I just briefly touched upon, is super bogged in one or arguably two different ways. As you can see here from Danny on PC's video. There are circumstances where it just doesn't land damage. Uh, I raised that there were issues with this gun in my own video after having seen people like Danny say there might be something wrong and he's now essentially built upon my video and proved without doubt that something is up with that but I guess it really wouldn't be a proper batch for 5 update without something not working properly. And so yeah anyway there are other new guns as well which I'm actually looking forward to using for videos which is obviously a very good sign as there have been times before when some new guns just simply didn't interest me. And so so now what about the maps? Well, there's El Marge, but there's a strange aspect here is they didn't put it into its own playlist featured for the week or whatever. Uh, people want to play a new map, but right now there are a few ways to actually do that consistently. A playlist for it is coming soon, but yeah, that's very, very questionable when it first releases. Let people play the new content. This way of doing it is not what I would have advised. I would completely support still DICE getting some new people on board to consult with on matters regarding the game, but we'll just have to wait and see whether they make that move 
move. But yeah, this is a totally new map. It's infantry only, and I'm a big, big fan. Not everyone will be, but that's the kind of thing I like. And it gives a specific experience that's set aside from a lot of the other maps, which is what we want from new maps. I think it's much better design. It's less open. There's more lanes in it. There's more opportunity to move around, use flanking routes, and it's much more like some maps we've seen in, say, Battlefield 1. However, I have noticed the map does still have some windows you can't mantle through very well, as we saw on Al Sandan, which is a shame. Not seen anyone else mention that, but yeah, be aware that does happen on some windows. Regardless, both of the maps are fresh. One of them is fun for me. That's Al Marge. The other one is Provence, which I have said does have something for everyone, and it does, as we'll get into, but I don't think it's wonderful for how I like to play. And it seems to be kind of splitting opinion, but that's just how maps work sometimes. Uh, I think it's a little chaotic in the village area, but it can be fun. That's where I like to stay. The rest of it, the wide open fields and stuff, can be kind of boring and frustrating. I wouldn't really call that map design rather than just, hey, here's some open space, a lot of it. But some of you will enjoy that. And either way, at least it's something new to do, which people have been crying out for throughout Battlefield 5. Less drip fed content, more stuff to keep us playing. And besides the obvious weapons, maps, vehicles, and such like, there are other minor factors, such as we have charms available now, more will be coming in the future. It's something we've seen talked about by data miners for a long time. Finally, we're getting them. So that's another little extra detail for the guns, just to make them feel like they're our own, even if there is only one charm right now. And there will be other new cosmetics coming if that's what you like. Something I don't like that I saw is possibly ghillie suits coming. I saw that via Temporial, the data miner, or Temporal. I always get it wrong. Sorry, dude. We'll just have to see if that makes it to the game, but I'm not a fan of that idea at all due to visibility. Fingers crossed that doesn't turn into an absolute nightmare. But anyway, this isn't just about the update, of course, it's about the overall state of the game now that we have the update, because the update is fresh for a while and then we're just playing the game as a whole. This will help you decide one, if you want to come back or not, and two, if you do come back, whether it will be very temporary for the new stuff or whether it will keep you playing for an extended amount of time. So let's go through some of the relevant issues still in play. There's obviously still cheaters and stuff, I'm not going to go into that. Nothing has really changed for the anti-cheat. Uh, but the main one for me is there's still no team balancer. It didn't make it into this update. So, we're hoping it turns up sooner rather than later, as the game not effectively moving players around between rounds kills so many lobbies, especially with so many set squads now playing the game, rather than just random casuals a lot of the time. You have to either randomly reassign individuals or parties, or balance via performance. Either is better than nothing, which is what we seemingly have right now. Now, obviously there are still bugs, like you still can't ADS sometimes after reviving someone or throwing an ammo pouch or whatever it may be. And something I haven't noticed until recently is you can't do anything in the menus now sometimes when you leave servers, so you have to quit the app and come back in. All kinds of stuff like that, really just the usual for this game. DICE have never really got on top of this stuff. Oh, and another minor little point, the new guns aren't yet in the practice range. Uh, the one time people might want to use them in the practice range is when they're new, but DICE are very lax about that thing. They just kind of threw it in the game, to be honest, so no. When I checked, uh, what, a couple days ago, they weren't in there yet, which is bad form in my opinion. On the plus side, games like Frontlines, the temporary modes are super fun to play now and we can do because we do have RSP or private games, which people are seemingly using a bit more now with this new content. Although it is still very, very limited, it can still be a struggle. At least there is the possibility to play those modes again, especially if you're someone with some kind of following, you can start up those lobbies, advertise it and get it populated. So overall, some say this update and the state of the game is awful, whereas others are loving it. I'm personally falling at the update being pretty good, as I said, and the state of the game being acceptable, but we aren't going to get anything else. This is it now, other than minor improvements, so how long that holds my attention and that of others kind of remains to be seen. But this was a look at the type of supports that could have seen this game flourish, what BF5 should have been. And we must keep in mind that they threw most of what they had working at this. As I said at the beginning, that's very important, but just for a second, imagine the Pacific update happened, which went really well, then they didn't mess with the TTK again, the game didn't get cancelled, they did some more marketing, more people came back, an update like this then follows, it's possible that the game really could have seen a resurgence, and again, it shows the colossal waste of potential this game had. Even in this kind of broken form we have it in, there was something here. So, if you didn't like the game enough before, this update alone probably won't then be enough for most of you. Not for the long term. This is a bit of extra sparkle, not a shift towards a bright new future for BF5, for most people. In fact, this is a marker for the end of its active life cycle. A positive one, but still a marker of the end. It would have taken continued support 
of this nature to turn things around. And that's just not on the cards. In fact, we don't know if DICE were even going to be capable of that. To stress, this update is good because of how much is in it and how many places it probably got pulled from. None of the other updates have been like this in terms of scale, aside from maybe the Pacific which was kind of large, but all of that stuff needs to be considered. And so now, you can make your own decision. Thank you so much for watching and for supporting my content long term if you've been here for a while. Let me know what you think, like the video if you enjoyed and subscribe if you're new or if you just haven't done so before, check below. It will help you to stay up to date, especially if you turn on notifications. And all the links to my social media, including Patreon, can be found in the description and my pinned comment, where if you support me on Patreon, you'll get onto this board of awesome with the other epic people who are all absolute heroes and love them all deeply and of course, often. So yep, links to that in the description and my pinned comment. And with that all said, I'm Get Good Guy, and I'll see you next time, laters. So then I threw on the K3143 again, and this time I used the Predator Scope, and the game was quite surprised by how far off the bullet hole actually landed. It's just nowhere near.